So in the 1960s, the space world was dominated by this space race. And as the decade went on, in the early years, it looked like the Soviet Union were getting ahead in rehearsing all of the stages necessary to get a human being to the moon and back. The world's first multi-person spacecraft. The world's first spacewalk. But by 1964-65, it was clear that the Americans with their Gemini program were racing ahead. And this culminated, of course, in the triumph of Project Apollo. In these four magical years between 1968 and 1972, the 24 astronauts who went to the moon and the 12 who walked on its surface became the only members of the human race to have ever directly explored an alien world. And the science that they brought back transformed our understanding not only of the moon, but also of the geological understanding of the Earth itself. But in 1972, after six successful landing missions, the entire program stopped. Many people ask, why? Well, the answer was a combination of politics and also budgets. Because Project Apollo, at its height in the mid-1960s, when spending was maximum, it was taking 5% of the United States budget. And people in America were questioning, why are we spending all of this money? Well, as long as there was a race on, that was justified. But as soon as the first landing with Apollo 11 and return to Earth was completed, people began asking, why are we carrying on doing this? Well, of course, the later lunar missions were all about science and especially the last three missions, Apollos 15, 16 and 17, where they took the lunar rover onto the surface, where each mission spent three days doing geological investigations. The science return was tremendous. But by then, the decisions were made that Project Apollo would finish. And instead, from the Soviet Union's perspective, having lost the race to the moon, they decided to focus on space stations. Because the longest flight to the moon and back was only about 12 days long. What would it take to keep a human being alive in space, not for two weeks, but for a month, for three months, for six months or longer still? And so the Soviets began investing in space stations, orbiting just a few hundred kilometres above the Earth, but as a platform on which their cosmonauts could do more and more science. In the United States, the focus was different. How could we make space travel and access to space cheaper? The answer was the development of the space shuttle. Because it was partially reusable, some parts of it, like the orbiter, could be used for mission after mission, unlike the previous spacecraft, which were pretty much one use only. And so, after the triumphs of Project Apollo, what we saw was a bit of a retreat. Instead of looking at human exploration, it was about how can humans use the environment much closer to Earth, in what should we call low Earth orbit, and build our experience base. And of course, all of that work culminated in the largest human spaceflight engineering project in history, the International Space Station.